Oh, yeah, it's Monday morning. Don't worry about it, folks. Don't worry about it. There's nothing to see here as Rome burns and we witness firsthand the fall of the American Republic. The enemies are at the gates, but we have plenty of things to distract us. It's not your fault at all. You have to watch what everyone else is up to, liking posts, following the live feeds. Otherwise, you might miss something, and nobody likes FOMO. You get drawn into content that might be interesting but isn't relevant to your purpose. You know that kind of stuff, right? You find yourself wandering the social media sphere aimlessly looking for relevant content. You don't believe in distracted driving, but why do we constantly engage in distracted living? Heads down, eyes on the phone, ignore the world around you, miss the conversations at the table, kids growing up, people passing in and out of your life, the sheer volume of information that we're exposed to these days can attack all of our senses. While the age of information may have made us better connected and informed, it's also made our lives more rushed, hectic, and distracted. And that's that's a problem. Big Brother's loving the results. Research is now pro- proving that the brain is not quite coping with the amount of information we receive and our ability to disconnect from the outside and, pre- and be present in the moment is actually decreasing. That's right, the age of information has conditioned us to believe that we need to absorb every ounce of information sent our way and squeeze as much as we possibly can into our daily schedules to get the most from life. Yet, if you think about it, constant rushing, jumping from one task to another, dividing our attention onto a million different things, is hardly equal to living a life to the fullest. It's like we made our minds join CrossFit, but the class never ends and the coach sucks and the exercises are garbage. A lot of real life stuff's going on around us, but we talk about how time is just flying by. A sense of life passing by is a sure sign of having been distracted for too long from the things that are truly important. Slow down, folks. Reassess your priorities. Control your technology instead of it controlling you. Make face-to-face time an actual priority. Learn to say no and decline things. Get rid of the mental clutter. Make your priorities great again. Notice each day. Notice each day. All I'm saying is it's time to truly re-engage before our lives and our culture come crumbling down around us while we desperately search in vain for a phone charger. Now, our top story tonight, number one with a bullet, a a mother of three in San Antonio, Texas, shot an intruder attempting to break into her home, score one for the good girls. The criminal did, in fact, die of all the states to try to be criminal scum, and maybe next time don't mess with Texas, where open carry is an open secret, and every gal has a gun in her garter belt and her panty drawer. China and Russia are in talks to develop a base on the moon. This is the same Russia that threatened to crash the International Space Station into Earth if we didn't fold into their trade demands, whining like Eli Manning on draft day. Now they're putting their noses in our business. See what I did there? And demanding we give them some space. Well, actually all of it, space. I say instead we take this war to the frigid temps of space and make it a really cold war. It's hard to have a swinging dick contest in deep space where the average temperature is negative 454 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe we had a real dick swinger in the White House. He could come up with something like, oh, I don't know, Space Force. That's right, we did. Y'all made fun of it. Anyway, appealing to their inner Joseph Goebbels, the Department of Homeland Security has taken a break from its busy schedule of not combating terrorism to announce the creation of a disinformation governance board to combat the flow of dangerous misinformation. That's very Chairman Mao of them. But it's also a fancy way of saying some idiot showed the Democrats the Harry Potter movies and they just had to have their own Ministry of Truth, which is ironic because if there is one thing the left can't stand, it's truth. The truth is, if the left was held accountable for failed policies, there wouldn't be a single man left in the party, which again is ironic, because if the left manages to enact their gender fluidity policies, there literally won't be any actual men left anyway, just a bunch of hybrids. And don't forget, kids, there may be 27,000 genders, but when you go in for the reassignment surgery, there's only one other option to pick aside from the one you were born with. Even the best surgeons can't make you into a Zim or a Zer. The Chad Prather Show, folks. It's Monday at the helm. The puppet master, the perfectionist, Mark, and along with Super Chris Cruz. And let's love Brandon at the helm, driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity. And speaking of insanity, welcome to the show once again, Alexandria Stein. Alexandria. <laughs> Primetime 99, Alexandria Stein. Look at the package. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. (laughs) This is for all the ladies and the men watching at home. We know that we want to be inclusive. And let me just tell you something. Being gender fluid, Chad's a liar. We can all be gender fluid. And when I have my gender reassignment surgery, I will prove him wrong. So, uh, listen, all I'm trying to do (laughs) is compete against the ladies. That's all I want. Because I never got a college scholarship. I want that college scholarship. I want to go. Leah Thomas is my personal hero, my sports icon, Chad. And so I want to be the next Leah Thomas. 
Alexandria, it's fantastic to see you, <laughs> all of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, still, still man, man spreading. Well, that, I, this is female splaining. I'm, <laughs> I'm female splaining. And let me just tell you something. It's, it's funny because ever since I've chosen to live this life, chat, I've been only met with ridicule. I've been met with a lot of uh, disgust from the trans community. I think they're threatened by my transition because I'm such a masculine female. Um, I'm really shaking up the sports world. I'm shaking up the digital media world. I'm really just shaking up the world like a Coke can, basically. <laughs> How... Um which hurts worse, the uh, the hormone therapy or the skull cap? The skull cap is mm. crushing my brain. I have a <laughs> terrible headache. So the gender reassignment surgery, that's probably not bad. The hormone therapy, it's it's actually, my nipples are getting so big, it's actually not that bad. I actually nice. kind of like the, the nipple uh, enlargement, so... Yeah, so now you got something to feel while you touch yourself. That's it's, what I'm you get, saying. Yeah. And when I take off my shirt, people are like, wow, they give me a wide berth. They leave me alone <laughs> when I'm at Whole Foods. It's really nice. And, you know, uh, I get to park in the handicap spot because uh, I'm technically mentally ill. So it's really good. It's actually uh, it's pretty nice, pretty easy. Yeah, I got to be following Primetime Stein on the Instagram. On the gram, when you showed up at the city council meeting, which city were you in when you showed up? Okay, Chad, so I'm at Plano, which you have to come to Plano with your, you have to bring your guitar, you have I'll to play, play music, but this is the thing, is, is I'm sitting here in a woman's bathing suit, because I'm calling out the hypocrisy of the world we live in, and the video that went viral is I'm at Plano City Council wearing this bathing suit, and they looked at me like with total disgust, yet we literally live in a world where Leah Thomas swam on the men's team for three years, and then goes to the female team ranked 457th on the men's, but number one on the women's, and the media cheerleads it oh this is good <laughs> oh we love the Thomas. she's so good so everything that i'm doing is literally just a, a regurgitation of the mainstream media there you go um yeah, i mean you're just saying what they're saying they know big difference well see they don't like it because i'm a comedian and i'm self-deprecating and i don't care but the thing is these people that you know that do transition they want to be treated um you know with an extra bit of care that you and I don't get. And this is another thing is when I was younger and I'm not that old, but I remember trans people didn't want you to know they were trans. They wanted you to know that they're the opposite sex, right? Like if it was a man to a female, they just wanted you to think they're female. But in this day and age, you look at all the teachers, they, especially the libs of TikTok account, they have to say that they're trans, you know, instead of being like, you know, a, a guy trying to be a girl, they have to say, oh, I'm trans. So they, like you said earlier, when you get the g gender reassignment surgery, you can either pick male or female, but they want to pick that third sex. They all want to be that, that Zim or Zer, like you're saying, yeah. which is weird. That's a great point, actually. That's because uh, it, it's not about, okay, I'm a woman now. No, no I'm a trans woman, right? It's, uh, a, it's its own category. It's, it's its own category. That's interesting. I uh, It sounds painful to me. <laughs> it, it sounds painful. And it, it's kind of heartbreaking. It really is for the people who are truly honest to God dealing with that dysphoria in their mind. It, it is. But then you're going to put... You know, put the the stuff on display, which really kind of is cramming an ideology down somebody's throat. Now, you had a cameo that was sent back to you from mm -hmm. somebody that we featured on. Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney. And Dylan Mulvaney, for the people who don't know. Dylan, is he legit? Yes. Okay, so this is, I didn't realize, I thought Dylan Mulvaney, and the guys, is going viral. I think now he has like a million followers on TikTok. And Dylan Mulvaney is a guy that's just uh, documenting every day of his transition, so or of her transition, whatever you want to call it. It's day 51, day 49, day 48, and she does a vlog. And so I ordered a cameo saying, I want you to congratulate me on my bottom surgery, on me winning. <laughs> and uh, so she did. She made it instantly. And she's like, oh, we love you, Alex. I hope you make it to the Olympics. And then when she realized it was a troll, she was crushed. But my point, my point being is her fans, she sent an army of fans, sent me the most disgusting stuff I've ever heard. I mean, you should die. You should kill yourself. You know, I mean, so these people are very non-inclusive, her yeah. fans. The internet is is very um, mean. It is. It it's a, is. It's a mean place. But this is the problem with the internet is they'll give us all day long how Johnny Depp's girlfriend pooped in the bed, but they give us not one frame of the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. You know, like they give us all this distraction. And the reason why I bring up the trans thing, it's really a distraction. They want to feminize the men, masculinize the women so that they can make us confused. So we don't even know what's going on. So children think, oh, maybe if I transition my sex, I'll get attention from my teacher. It's just in, we live in this weird, weird, confusing clown world, Chad, and it's only getting more confusing. 
confusing as the days go on. Yeah, I mean, these are adult gender reveal parties or gender unreveal parties with the masculinization of the feminine, <laughs> the feminization of the masculine these days. Um, and God forbid anybody be too masculine, right? Uh, because you're going to get hammered with the toxicity accusations. Yep. And, uh, but you're obviously trolling at the highest levels. Well, I'm a king troll, and this is the other thing. So you <laughs> saw New York Times wrote an article about saying how Tucker Carlson is the newest white supremacist, the white power hour, and they said one of the things, one of the five um, biggest keys that he talks about in his show is the feminization of women, and he's not wrong. I mean, they literally yeah. called him racist for pointing that out, but I think it's pretty obvious when you look at the amount of people that transitioned in the 80s and the 90s compared to today, it's up like 20 thousand percent so there's something that's artificially inflating people to get motivated to transition their sex oh, it's, it's big time they're being they're being hammered which is again goes back to the point of my monologue at the intro we've gotten so distracted mm -hmm. we, we're having so much information thrown at us we can't separate what's real what's fiction what you know what's satire what <laughs> is true you know news uh, you know, I got the daily trolls that come at me. One guy said the other day, he sends me this report from MIT. They said that MIT and Yale came out with a new study that talks about the reason that conservatives get censored on social media is because we are verifiably more fake news with yeah. the stuff that we share. And I'm like, well, you, MIT and Yale are not bastions of unbiased opinion and thought here. Uh, so, you know, you guys banned the Babylon Bee from Twitter for being a satire site. You can't even make jokes because suddenly that's fake news. Well, the same people that are so worried about this uh, disinformation board are the people that propagated Russiagate for four years. I mean, so these people are literal liars. They got caught lying yeah. and they get pumped up as, oh, they're the bastion. CNN tells the truth. And this is another thing. CNN's so full of crap. Don Lamont says white supremacy <laughs> is our biggest problem. He's married to a white guy. I yeah. mean, these people, they're just so hypocrite. Hypocritical, it, it makes me sick with the mainstream media and the disinformation they do just as much dis disinformation as the right side. But at least they didn't attack the Capitol. <laughs> oh, my gosh. At least they didn't. Well, they burned down. In Portland, they burned down the federal building for 60 days straight, Chad. And the only person that got uh, in trouble for that, they got 60 days of house arrest for throwing a Molotov cocktail. Mayor Ted Wheeler in Portland protected those people. Yet you go to January 6th, people were literally walking within the velvet ropes. And yeah. there are people getting six to ten years yeah. for just walking inside the Capitol. Walking, in the, walking like tourists in the velvet ropes. Savage savage attack well i mean we just live in the clown world and i hate to admit this but it's like i just think the trajectory we're going now we have to wake people up because the reason why this trans thing is so bad is people see leah thomas and there's so many helicopter parents that want their kids to be good athletes so they're going to start encar encouraging younger people to transition earlier so your oh, son yeah. can play on the women's basketball watch team. and see and the so you're going to see 13 year olds joining the swim team that are biological boys it's going to happen it's only going to get it's only going to metastasize to where people are like what is going on because if they're not saying it now i mean we are because we have a conservative mindset but if people aren't yelling and screaming now and protecting women's rights now women's rights are gone because there's going to be men taking all their spots in sports yeah one of the things that we're doing right now on on the blaze uh you go to theblaze.com is you can Put your email address in. Yeah, we want your email address. Of course we do. Uh, but you get to take a quiz. And it's a lot of this is based off of Glenn's special last week. Um, I think it was the week before, actually, where um, there's a quiz here. Like, for instance, at what age are publicly educated children first being asked about their gender identity? And then there's four options, 2 to 5, 6 to 9, 10 to 13, 14 to 17. And the correct answer is what? Two to five. Wow. Two to five years old. They're being asked about their gender identity. This is the truth. This is the stuff that was exposed. Glenn's special. Uh, I, I, you know, I was about to do a special of my own on this whole thing, and then I was like, "Nah, Glenn, let just let Glenn do it." I, we've been bringing our guests on mm -hmm. who are experts in this field and stuff that's going on. The stuff they're unco uncovering, they're sending me every day. It's absolutely freaking disgusting. Well, I want to say in the "Don't Say Gay" bill, it's so ridiculous. First of all, it doesn't even say that. But if you can't talk about sex to your coworkers, you shouldn't be able to talk about sex to children. And the same people defending it, Disney. 
When they put a movie out in China, they airbrush John Boyega off the poster because he's black. When they put a movie out in Saudi Arabia, they take out, they edit out all the gay scenes. So these these companies that are you know defending the don't say gay bill, they're not even following the same restrictions in these other countries where it's not part of their culture. So it's all a facade yeah. meant to basically socially engineer us to be accepting of it, yet these other countries don't accept it at all. No, they don't do it. And we're going to keep bowing down to places like China mm-hmm. and... Uh, well, we, after the break, we're going to come back. Some of the stuff that uh, Chris Chris went through a training program this past hmm. weekend. Chris needs a lot of re-education. Uh, he'll be in the re-education camp. He'll be there. Yeah, he'll be there soon. He'll be there. You know, I tweeted out over the weekend. I said, "There's there are no political parties in the re-education camps in the concentration camps." You know, and that's a fantastic shot of that Alexandria when shot. they show that. I Look love at that. that. Let me tell you, based on the bulge I'm seeing, there's going to be a lot of vagina. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of vagina It's going to be a lot. They're gonna, I don't know how they're going to invert it. I don't know what they're going to do, but I trust the science. That's one thing I do. I trust Dr. Fauci. And that's yeah. another thing. Rachel Levine said uh, all pedi- pediatricians say gender-affirming care is uh, approved. You know, they approve it no matter what. Yeah. So that's the world we live in, that every single, every single doctor out there wants to be able to let a kindergarten teacher decide your children's sex. There you go. Uh, well, you don't have to worry. Hopefully, you'll lose all of your hair. Uh, no, I want to keep not, the hair because I kind of like the wanna... body hair. Well, I'll get it lasered. I mean, yeah. I, it's hard. This is the last bastion of my manhood, but I'm ready to let it go. I'm ready to be <laughs> Alexandria full, I hear full you. on. Well, speaking of hair loss, uh, it can be tough for real men. Uh, you see it in your pictures. Your barber points it out to you. They laugh at you behind your back. Uh, now you're shopping for baseball caps, cowboy hats, whatever. What are you going to do about it? <clears throat> if your plan is to buzz cut it, uh, don't shave it. Save it with Keeps. Keeps has clinically proven, FDA-approved hair treatments available online. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or take care of the hair you have, your Keeps physician will help you select the right product and develop a personalized hair-saving routine that works for you. It's easy. No waiting rooms or pharmacy visits. Keeps is delivered straight to your door at about half the cost. That's half the cost. And if you have questions, you can message your Keeps doctor 24-7. Don't let the balding jokes, uh, maybe they're wearing thin. Don't let them get to you. Join thousands of guys who have saved their hair. Visit Keeps.com slash loss for 50% off your order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash loss. Keeps.com slash loss. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah, blazetv.com slash Chad is where you want to go and sign up for your annual, annual subscription. Use promo code Chad. Save $10 off that annual subscription. And don't forget, uh, watch Chad.com for all the fun stuff. Is a hey, uh, we had a great time in the Woodlands. I had a show there Friday night. Fun, fun crowd. Uh, we're going to do it again. Naples, Florida. Uh, I am coming. Comedy show. Straight up comedy show. Naples, Florida. Off the Hook Comedy Club, May 25th. Going to be back. I think it's my fourth time there in Naples. Those of you who remember the uh, the hotel room with the stripper pole and the mirrors, the place you just didn't want to touch anything with your bare skin. Yep, same town right there, right down the road. Will not be going back there. Uh, but many of you remember that video. Uh, conservative Ant is going to be with us. Uh, our buddy Bobby Sausalito, Take Naps. You know, you've seen him on the show. Uh, he's going to be opening for me. So it's going to be a fun night. Two shows. Uh, WatchChad.com has all the information. Just go click on Naples, Florida. And uh, come on, Florida. Show up and see us. Um, what, what, what? So I had to get Stein out of here. Alexander, he was giving me the heebie-jeebies. Um, that boy ain't wrapped. He's not, as, he's not wrapped as tight as that bathing suit, let me just say. Um, Biden's highest-ranking transgender official, as far as I know, the only transgender official, uh, Rachel Levine says that medical professionals unanimously agree about value of gender affirming care. Uh, and Alexandria uh, <laughs> Stein just referred to this situation. Uh, this is where we're living in, in shrouded in a weird cosmic mystery world right here. You just say stuff and there's, you know, Nobody's going to push back. So I don't know where that ministry of disinformation is when somebody like Rachel Levine, who still has a wiener, by the way, still has balls. Uh, I haven't seen him, but according to reports, uh, still still working with the uh, the berries in the twig. 
uh, said, there's no argument among medical professionals about the value and importance of gender-affirming care. I'd love to hear from you pediatric medical professionals. I really would. I'd love to hear. I want. I expect you guys to go where podcasts are offered and just leave 100% affirmations across the board about how gender-affirming care for children is just 100% your MO. It is your modus operandi. It is how you go into the clinic every day, making sure that you are going to affirm the gender confusion. That's my word, gender confusion of children. Um, so there you go, folks. Uh, there it is. The the uh, <coughs> HHS secretary, that's right, uh, includes, by the way, in case you think I'm not, I'm just pulling this all out of proportion. Uh, their gender affirming care. What they mean by that is, quote, top surgery, it's the breasts, and the bottom surgery, that's the genitals. That's what they mean when they say gender affirming care for children. So I want to make sure that all of you medical professionals out there, and I know we have a huge swath of medical professionals watching this program. I want all of you to uh, to go on there, leave us a, just leave us a review and talk about how you want to just cut the twigs and berries, cut the balls off of a kid so that they can be a girl. Um, anyway, this this is insanity. Chris, you had a little training. Apparently, this is what state of Texas. Do we know yeah. the state of Texas has a, a requirement child protection training? Uh, so, like, if you are a staff, a volunteer, counselor with church leadership. Uh, they want you to have a clear understanding of how to recognize, reduce, prevent, and report suspected sexual abuse or molestation at, say, like a church camp, okay? And then they go in to this, and, and so you had to take a test, right? Yes. Uh, you had to study this packet of information. Of course, it talks about the types of abuse, physical abuse, emotional and psychological mistreatment, neglect, sexual abuse. Um, there's other types of abuse, like abandonment, threats, and stuff like that, bullying. Um, and it talks about the effects of it, you know, then the signs to look for. But here's where it gets particularly interesting. Um, a few pages back, uh, they are going to identify typical patterns and methods of operation of child abusers. Now, again, some of you want to come at me. Some of my big critics, they say, it's not happening, Chad. You're making all of this up. It's not happening in the schools or anything else. None of this is really going on. But let's talk about how the state defines the patterns and methods of child abusers, okay? Uh, they have a particular sexual preference for children of a particular age, uh, gender or child specific with physical characteristics. Um, they're predatory. They're proactive in seeking a victim. They invest significant amounts of time, energy, money, and other resources to fulfill those desires. Got an excessive interest in children. They seek access to children. Uh, they move around a lot because they don't want to be captured. They don't want to be caught. Lots of pornographic collections. But here's their methods of operation. Here we go. Seduction. The molester usually is known to the child. He spends time with the child and normally is trusted by the child. The initial contact with the child is non-sexual. But over time, advances to be a sexual uh, in, in, in relationship in nature. They might use pornography to lower the sexual inhibitions of the child. They might use a technique called, and this is in quotes right here, grooming. Grooming, people said, well, what is grooming? Grooming's not happening. It's not happening in the schools. It's not happening in churches. Not happening at the Chuck E. Cheese. Everybody's just completely innocent out there. Grooming is a gradual and subtle process, and one that has extraordinary power desensitizing the victim to increasingly inappropriate behavior while rewarding the victim for tolerance of that behavior. Um, that is directly from a book, Where Wolves Wear Shepherd's Clothing, Helping Women Survive Sexual Abuse by Diana Garland. Um, that's exactly what we've been calling it, Chris. When we say groomers, and I've had people even text me, and they're saying, could you please define what grooming means, that's what it is. You are desensitizing your victim to inappropriate behavior. You will reward the victim for tolerance to that behavior. These are the kind of things when we expose what's happening in these cases at schools and other places like that, where we're turning our children over to the influence of, of some educators. And again, not all. Don't, don't put words in my mouth. But it is happening. And we want to be cautious here. because. 
these inhibitions are being lowered. If, as I said in the last segment, in some places of public education, they're talking about gender affirmations at the age of two to five. Folks, if you start that young, that is lowering the inhibitions to talk about these things. That's exactly what the hell that is. So I'm not, I'm not saying, hey, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a treat if you let me touch you. That's not what we're saying here. We're saying, no, we're, we're going to talk about your gender. We're going to talk about your, your sexual, you know, preferences or your sex preferences. And I'm not talking about the act of sex. I'm talking about, again, your biology. They're going to talk about that. It desensitizes. And to a child, that can happen very fast because you start to, you can laugh at it. You can launder it out there. You can pander to it. You can legalize it. And once it's legalized, you can just do anything you want to do. So when Rachel Levine comes out and says, oh, yeah, all the doctors are into it. All the doctors say it's okay. Well, shit, if the doctors are into it, then why can't I talk about it as a teacher? Just another form of, of, of teaching a kid about biology, right? So I can just couch all of these crazy grooming tactics into educational words or uh, even uh, educational practices, and nobody's going to think anything about it. No, it's just, it just, you know, we're just teaching them anthropology. We're just teaching them biology. We're just teaching them, you know, health and behavior. I mean, it's no different than how we take care of our bodies and wash and use soap and you know it's no different than that sticker on the mirror that says wash your hands before you go eat it's no different than any of that right wrong it is it's wrong when when you have somebody that is being creative in the way they use the natural desires of a child to twist that child and it actually says right here children see adults as authority figures Children are naturally curious. They need attention and affection. A molester may use those natural tendencies to trick the child into a situation where molestations can occur. Molesters will isolate a child from adult supervision where they will be more vulnerable to molestation. There's force involved where a child who's too small or too little to resist the force. Um, usually that happens when they're not acquainted with the molester. But then there's secrecy. That's the common thread in all the operations and methods. Secrecy is maintained by several methods they include but are not limited to. Bribery could include gifts, animals, favors to interest the child. Blame. The molester tells the child they're at fault for what happened. Embarrassment. Children realize what has taken place is wrong. Loss of affection. Often the molester is a person that is, that is loved by the child. Displaced responsibility. The child blames themselves for the molestation. Threats where obviously they threaten the child or the family with some kind of physical harm. Um, I'm just saying, be aware, folks. Be aware. These are the kind of things that we brush under the rug, and we just say, ah, oh, it's not happening. Well, no, 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 no. You might, you might want to pay a little closer attention to where your children are going, where your grandchildren are going, all right? Again, I'm not painting everybody out there that works with kids as guilty. God knows. I was in church yesterday, and uh, the, the children's pastor a uh, fantastic job. She did a fantastic job. She she did they had three services. We went to the middle we went to the 9:30 service there at Lone Star Cowboy Church down in Montgomery. It's a great church, Chris. Great group of folks down there. And she did a fa fantastic job. But I mean, here's the children's minister. I you know, I'm not lumping everybody that works into children. God bless those who work with children. God bless the educators, the teachers, those who have a good heart. But man, we sure are, you know, me personally, I, I want to see Mickey Mouse get pulverized in a in a in a wood chipper, but that's another story. Those of you out there working with those kids, protect those kids. All right, protect those kids. Hey, folks, you know I love the pretzels. Where are my pretzels? Where are my trucker treats? There they are. Uh, and you know we love truckers. We're always talking about our trucker friends out here. So I want to tell you about trucker treats. You've heard me talk about them before. You've heard me eat them. You see me pick it out of my teeth after a break. That's because I love pretzels. They're the nation's best seasoned gourmet pretzel company. They're 100% made in America. Everything, all the seasonings, ingredients, even the packagings and the bags made in America. Zach is a trucker. Uh, he created this business. He's a faithful listener to the program, faithful to the Blaze Network, and he created Trucker Treats. It's a family business, customer service, and customer-centered, 100% uh, providing personalized service and highest quality products to you. They developed six mouth-watering flavors to choose from. The original Cool Ranch Hot Cajun Cinnamon Toast Dill Pickle Bacon Cheeseburger. Yeah, it's good. 
candy cane, seasonal, but they got some hidden away back there if you really want them. Uh, I'm sure there's a flavor or two for you that you're going to love, and new unique flavors are on the horizon. So support our truckers because that's what they do. Whenever you buy this, this goes to support our truckers. All right? Proceeds from the purchases go to the truckers. It's a great snack for uh, those summer trips that are coming up or just going down the road. Go to truckertreats.net. 40% off with promo code CHAD. I spell it Chad. That's truckertreats.net. Promo code Chad. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, folks. Pretty fired up. Hey, uh, sometimes we come on this program and we talk about simple things, try to keep it that way, and then some days we just shoot for the moon and try to talk about something big, really big, such as the case with the latest attempt the United States government is making towards bringing the George Orwell novel 1984 to life. Let's start with something fun, Adam Schiff. Let's talk about him. The other day, he tweeted out the following. He said, here's my take on the world's richest man buying Twitter. He makes a great car and rocket, but I'm concerned that his personal views will stop the fight against disinformation on social media. The problem on Twitter hasn't been too much content moderation. It's too much hate. So assuming that you didn't just fall out of your chair laughing at the opinion of the guy who pushed the most disinformation on Trump not all that long ago, you probably find this hot take as irritating as I do. Nobody cares what you think, Shift for Brains. How long did you lie to the American people claiming you were sitting on top of a mountain of evidence that Trump colluded with the Russians when in reality what you had was a big fat nothing? You had nothing! And hey, not to worry, because when the word of disgraced civil servant doesn't do the trick, the Biden administration has other tricks up its sleeve. How about this new disinformation governance board, which we on the right are laughingly through our tears referring to as the Ministry of Truth? In a coincidence so strange, one almost wonders if it's actually a coincidence, the Department of Homeland Security has created this new head of the Hydra immediately in the wake of Elon Musk's decision to buy Twitter. Everywhere around the world, blue-haired crazies have been threatening to throw a plugged-in toaster into the bath with their Twitter account, which I just have to note is freaking hilarious to me. They'll be the first army in history to win a war by throwing the towel at the enemy. Uh, the Disinformation Governance Board is designed to coordinate countering misinformation related to Homeland Security focused specifically on irregular migration and Russia. Sounds totally legit, right? Heading up this new government entity is, you probably guessed it, yet another person whose credentials don't always pass the smell test. Nina Jankowicz not only has her hands deep in the cookie jar when it comes to the debunked Christopher Steele dossier, the pool from which she and Adam Schiff both you know, went and probably continue to go drink from, but she also hopped on the Hunter Biden laptop foreign interference theory, a lie spun from the same poorly woven cloth. And this chick is going to be responsible for making sure that we clean up any disinformation on aisle four. Give me a damn break. Listen. To, um, to what the, I want, you know, if you, if you really listen to what they say, for instance, the Honorable Alejandro Mayorkas, you listen to what he has to say about where they're going with this whole thing. Well, just hear it for yourself. Chris, play the clip. Um, uh, we are seeing a, and my time uh, a is rise, quite limited. We are seeing a rise in misinformation and disinformation uh, that is um, uh, attempting to strike at the integrity of the election system and people's uh, right to vote. And we're seeing on social media posts calling election officials corrupt and calling for violence against candidates and election officials. Isn't that correct? Uh, that is, Congressman, which is exactly why I addressed the secretaries of state throughout this country <laughs> a few weeks ago uh, to speak with them about the efforts that we are making uh, to provide them with physical security the resources and information they need to ensure uh, the safety of the electoral system over which they preside. All right. So, folks, as per usual, what we face in this country at this moment is a breakdown in the understanding and protecting of free speech. It's a breakdown. 
whether Twitter is the town square or not, and whether it remains the town square even when Elon Musk is running it or not, the simple fact of the matter is that the current efforts on the part of our government to control what we say to one another are unquestionably part of a bigger scheme to control what we think. And it doesn't have to be coming from some cabal of cigar-smoking movie villains sitting in a dark room and determining the fate of the world. It doesn't have to do that because the ideology behind it does all the hefty villainous lifting. Now, the people in charge can be good-hearted. Hell, in a few cases, they probably even are. It's bad enough to have a dangerous ideological framework upon which you're building the world of tomorrow. But when you do throw in such obvious, disingenuous people, people like Mrs. Jankowicz, for example, you're preparing the world for a serious beating. Now, never lose sight of the truth, folks. Free speech is an analog of free thought. And if we lose that, we've lost absolutely everything. Now... I'm actually writing a song uh, right now. We're working on a song called Ministry of Truth. <laughs> you should have it next week. Um, I, I was writing it actually this morning uh, while I was driving. Let me give you a couple of, couple of words, a couple of lines from it right here. It's going to be a country song, Chris, as, as I know how to do. Forget what you heard in history and ignore what you learned in biology, sociology, and anthropology. We will tell you what's best for you because we are the ministry of truth. So don't waste your time with thinking. We know a better plan for you. Like a dog that hears the bell ringing, we'll tell you just what to do. So don't question us for your own good if you don't think like you should. Being mentally tough will get you fitted for cuffs. It's really not up for dispute because we are the ministry of truth. It's going to be a chart topper. Well, you know what's funny, Chad? Now that you're saying that um, you have a song called Ministry of Truth, did you know that the new... Minister of Truth. She's also a singer. And she, I have the footage. She is quite the entertainer. Yes. Quite the Mary Poppins, this one. Yes. Can we play the clip? Go ahead. Homering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So disinformation's <laughs> origins are slightly less atrocious. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. When Rudy Giuliani shared bad intel from Ukraine, or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain, they're laundering disinfo, and we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice, or vote. Oh, information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So this information's origin seems likely less atrocious. <laughs> I, I, I just don't think these people are as charming as they think they are. I, I just, I mean, like, I, so, like, I know I'm a comedian. I know that what I put out there is supposed to be laughed at. Yeah. It's self-deprecating. Yeah. This level of bullshit right here, uh, they, mean, they mean that messaging, yeah. that whole thing. Just like when the, when the gay dude was running around with Jen Psaki answering calls. Yeah. You know, they, they mean that. Like, that's Rachel Levine. That's not a joke. That, you know, that's not a joke. Uh, and I still can't get over the fact that Rachel's real name is Richard, which is Dick. And anyway, you, there's so many places you can go with Dick Levine uh, as a transgender woman. But I digress because I'm not filled with hate so much like the left is. And I'm sure if I were to go very far with that joke, you know what would happen? The Ministry of Disinformation would censor me, and I'd be canceled. Don't move! We'll be right back. So we're working on a project. We're going to be doing it in June. I think the third week in June. Uh, my good friend, Monica Matthews, um, who will come on this show very soon. I want to have her on. I, I need you guys. You, you, my audience needs to be following her. Uh, you can find her on Twitter, Monica Matthews on air. And uh, she's, she's got a great podcast that she does and uh, with Clear Talk. Anyway, the... Um, getting together at my friend Larry Taunton, Larry Alex Taunton, the author. He's been on the show numerous times. Me and uh, him at his place, uh, Buzz Patterson, Rob Manus, and Monica's going to host a thing. We're going to sit around for a day. We're going to talk about what it means to be men. And we're going to film it. We're going to do discussion, production, the whole thing. 
it, it's going to be triggering, very triggering and very toxic. We're going to drink whiskey and scotch. We're going to smoke cigars. I'll probably have tequila. Um, but we're just going to sit around. We're, we're probably, we probably won't bathe three days prior to getting together. Uh, but Monica is going to come host it. We're going to produce this thing. It's going to be a fun little deal, and we'll distribute it. Uh, but we're going to sit around, and we're going to talk about, from, a, from men's perspective, what it means to be men. Should be very enlightening. Uh, it, it wouldn't be that. It wouldn't be that relevant, or even that radical, or revolutionary, if it wasn't for the times we're living in, when men, quite honestly, like women, are under attack. But I, I'm not going to give a seminar on what it's like to be a woman. <laughs> I'm not Alex Stein. Um, what I want to do, though, Chris, I, I think I want to do it on this Monday. Is get my juices flowing and the blood pumping with. Um, with uh, a TikTok. This is how I explain what being transgender means to kids. When a baby is born, the doctor looks at the baby and says, oh, this is a little girl, or, oh, this is a little boy. And sometimes the doctor gets that wrong. So when I was born, the doctor looked at me and said, this is a little girl. And so everybody thought that I was a little girl. But when I got older, I realized, wait, that's not actually who I am. And when I was able to tell people, I said, I'm not a little girl, I'm a little boy. And that just means that I am transgender, that who everybody said that I was isn't actually who I am. And I just had to explain that to people. And there's nothing wrong with being transgender. OK, first of all, that is an elementary school teacher. Who has no business explaining to children anything about being transgender. It goes right back to the grooming thing that we were talking about earlier. You have no business. I don't care where you tuck your balls. I don't care. My kids don't need to know about it. They do not know how you wrap your, your pigs in a blanket, okay? They don't need to know about any of that shit. So shut up or get out of the public school system. Get out of the school system. You do not need to be close to kids. You don't need to be within 100 foot of a Chuck E. Cheese. Stay away from children. Point blank, seriously. That, that, listen, if that's where we're going as a society, and if you don't believe it's out there, take the Blaze Quiz, blazequiz.com. Are you a groomer? Are you a groomer? Take the quiz, put in your email address so we can bug the piss out of you from now until Jesus comes back with Blaze Media articles. And that's what we want to do to keep you informed. Take the quiz. Are you a groomer? Now, I know you're going to say, no, I'm not. But what I want you to see by taking the quiz is you're going to see some things that are actually happening. Not only in society, but in our schools. And you're going to go, nah, that's not happening. Verifiable facts, folks. Go take the quiz. BlazeQuiz.com. They need to let me come up with a quiz. I'm coming for you, Beck. Oh, my gosh. We're in a battle, boys. We're in a battle. We, we are in a war for the next generation. I'm telling you, these folks like like this biological girl who's now a boy who's teaching class, I understand. You went through a lot of confusion, maybe some persecution, some bullying, all of that stuff. I get it. I get it. Listen to me. I get it. You want the kids today to have a more comfortable experience and, and all this. No, no. Let kids be kids. Sometimes kids are going to get bullied. We don't want it, and we try to protect them from that, but it is going to happen. It's part of growing up. Part of growing up. Sometimes you get some sand kicked in your face. Sometimes that happens to you as an adult. You know what it does? It prepares you for life. So create a safe space, yes, but don't talk about sexuality or anything else with my kids anywhere related to your genitalia. Easy. Be right back. If you go to chadonblaze.com, guess what you can get now? Guess what you can get right now? Show them, Chris. There it is, the brand new Ministry of Truth t-shirt with the official Chad Prather Ministry of Truth logo right there. Look at it. Uh, you're going to want to wear that everywhere you go. Get one for every day of the week. That's right. Get 10% off when you use promo code CHAD10. Folks, I love you. God bless you. Keep on hanging in there, folks. The battle is just getting started. We'll be back tomorrow night for a Tuesday episode, which, of course, is Monday's Hangover. We'll see you then. Love you. God bless you. Bye.